In the second round, who'd you second have? Round. Second round, we have uh, we addressed the tight end position again. If you look at the at the number of bodies they need as, as it stands right now, we think that Rob Gronkowski's coming back. If we think that that uh, Indomitian and Sue and possibly Steve McClendon might be back. Okay, but as it stands right now, John, this team has uh, Nacho, and they've got Vita Vea at defensive tackle, right, and, and Benning Potawahi and some other guys. But but I mean that's pretty much it at the tight end position. Kind of the same way, John. Cam Brait. It's going to be 31 in July, and you've got Cody McElroy. Those are your tight ends on the roster right now. So they, mm. they've got to do something at the tight end position from, from a body standpoint that we expect Rob Gronkowski to come back. Sure, that's fine. He's going to come back for one year. Brait will end up playing probably a final year in Tampa this year. Then you have nobody at the tight end position hitting into 2023. So this is where it kind of makes sense to, to look at, at the tight ends Rounds two through four. Not sure if if Trey McBride is going to be there at number sixty. I think there's a chance he could. Yeah, John, you and yeah, you and I could. were talking. You and I were talking about the tight ends, and I think you and I are in agreement about this. When you look at the at the tight end class, there's there's not that one stud tight end, right? There's there's a lot of guys that would be really good number twos in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a lot of guys. Trey McBride is is a player that. Is not huge. He's 6'4, weighed 246 at the combine, 245 at his pro day. Probably will get up to 250, 255. He's a scrappy, effective blocker. He's not a dominator at the line of scrimmage, but he is he does it well enough to where he could be considered a complete tight end. But he's a receiver. 91 catches last year for over a thousand yards, only had one touchdown. But when you go back and you watch the tape. He got tackled at the one or two yard line like four or five times. Yeah. Uh, after a 20 or 30 yard catch. So it was just like kind of luck of the draw there. But this guy, he's reminds me a lot of Jay Novacek from, from the Dallas Cowboys mm. back in the day. Yeah. Just a, kind Throw of a, a, yeah, just kind of, a, of an old school type player, team first guy. Seems like he'd be a good Bucks fit. John, the Buccaneers have brought him in for a top 30 visit. They had a formal interview that, that you and Matt Matera, pewterreport.com, broke that news. At the combine, when asked which teams were showing the most interest in McBride at his own pro day in Colorado State, he mentioned the Buccaneers as one of those three teams. He's a tricky player because he makes a lot of contested catches on tape, but he's not that big, he's not that long, and he right. doesn't jump that high. Like yep. it's going to be hard for him to yep. continue to catch 91 balls without being able to become a better route runner and create more separation. Right now, it just doesn't really happen for him. He's not really an explosive player, it, kind of explosive off the line of scrimmage, but not really explosive at the top of his routes. I don't think he's going to separate super well. Um, if, you know, if he has the beat zone coverage, and I think there's things he can do. Like It's not like he can't be productive. He could be a lower-end starter um, type of tight end, I think. Um, you know, So where do you value that? Is For me, it's probably somewhere in round three. Um, will he get to the Bucs? Late third round pick, probably not. So if they want him, they got to probably take him with that late second. Um, if he's there still, 